everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So today's video is going to be my Sunday sewing catch up and we're on episode 37. So I've got a couple of things to share with you today. It's not as um, bumper packed as my Sunday sewing catch ups normally are. I haven't actually got around to doing a huge amount of sewing. So I've got a couple of things to share with you today. Um, I've actually had a week where I've been quite poorly. Um, I've talked about this lots on my channel, but I um, suffer from irritable bowel syndrome and every so often I'll get a flare up. And this week I've had a flare up, so I've had a really sore tummy. Um, I've been feeling really bloated, lots and lots of tummy pain. So I've spent a lot of it just lay down or I've been getting out for walks because walks, gentle walks do um, help my tummy. So I haven't been as um, sort of busy with the sewing as I wanted to, given that it's seized holidays. And last Sunday I did talk about, um, you know, really looking forward to having a week of being able to immerse myself in sewing, but that hasn't happened. But hey ho, um, I'm sure I'll still be able to get little bits of sewing done here and there once the new term starts next week. Because I go back to school next week uh, for the summer term, which is one of my favourite terms in school. Before I dive into this video, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. And I'm wearing a Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress made in this really cute um, strawberry cotton poplin that I got from Fabric Godmother. It was bought last year, so I'm not sure if they'll have any left. But if they have, I'll link it down below for you. And I'll link any patterns and fabric I talk about today where possible in the description below. Um, I've got these really cute um, sort of vintage buttons that were sent to me by uh, Rainbow Fabrics on the front of it. Um, I put in waist ties for my Lyra just to bring it in at the waist. Um, it has got the ruffle on the bottom. Um, it has got pockets um, and it's short sleeves. And I really love the collar detail as well. I do prefer to have my collar open, but I have got buttons and buttonholes that go all the way to the top. I just find that a little bit uncomfortable having it fastened there. So I do tend to have my um, shirt dresses open like that. So um, I've got a mixture of things to share with you today. I've got a couple of things that I've been sewing. I have got some fabric from a fabric shop. I've got a new pattern to talk to you about, an update on a challenge, and then a YouTube um, channel to talk to you about, and then a few sewing plans. Although, like I said, I am going back to school next week, so I won't have as much time to immerse myself in sewing. Before I start um, sharing what I've been sewing this week, I just want to say thank you for all your lovely comments again. Thank you for all your likes on my videos and over on Instagram as well. I really do appreciate you commenting and sharing my um, posts and also my videos. I really do appreciate you coming back time and time again to watch my videos. If you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. My channel has kind of plateaued a little bit um, in terms of getting new followers and new subscribers. Um, so I wanted to open it up really to you to ask what would you like to see on my channel. So I do my regular Sunday sewing catch ups and I always get lots of comments um, and interaction via those blogs. I do occasionally try and share um, fabric calls, um, sort of a roundup of what I've been making. I've got my Sew Hilly Jane unboxing that I do. And then I did do a tutorial on how to sew up the hack that I did of the pearl cardigan. So I published that a couple of days ago. Um, and that's not been as popular as I was expecting it to be. So I just wanted to check that the videos that I am publishing for you are actually the things that you enjoy watching. So please do let me know in the comments below if you've got any suggestions on videos that you would like to see on my channel, because I want to make sure that the content that I'm sharing is something that you're really interested in. So thank you so much for your help with that. So what have I been sewing? Like I said, not much, but I've got a couple of dresses to share with you first. Um, the first two dresses are my hack of the pearl cardigan and if you have watched the tutorial in it I talk about hacking it further to remove the sleeves. So the first one is made in this gorgeous floral jersey fabric that I got from Abercorn Fabrics. Um, it's a polyester um, jersey fabric in this gorgeous sort of mustard colourway and it's got all these beautiful flowers all over it and I just absolutely love that print. So I'll put pictures in of me wearing this dress but it's the Tilly and the Buttons cardigan as the top part and then I've hacked it to include a ruffle detail that goes all the way along the front and it's sewn into the bodice. So this is where the waistband is and the ruffle starts just there and it's sewn in, goes all the way over the shoulder and then the sleeve sandwiches the ruffle in place between the armhole and the sleeve 
and the ruffle and I've got that obviously on both sides and then the additional hack that I've done to it is what you need to do if you want to create the wrap dress is you cut the waistband in half so you cut the waistband out as, as normal and then you cut it um, lengthways to make sure that you've got two waistbands and then you've got an outside waistband and an inside waistband I do go into more details in my video but just in case you didn't want to watch the whole thing and then I've just got a wrap skirt. So I've got two front skirt pieces, as you can see. And then I've got a ruffle on the bottom, um, which looks just like that. With the first one, um, I went with long sleeves. And then the second one, which I'll show you in a second, I decided to omit the sleeves. And I wondered whether I'd be able to do that because um, I've got the ruffle detail, which sort of encloses that um, armhole. It doesn't really enclose it, but it, it hides the seam line that you've got with the armhole. And it's got drop shoulder detail. So it's almost like the Kokowawa Crafts plum dress. So that's what I've done with the second um, version of this dress. So I'm really pleased with this make. Um, I'd originally wanted to sew this up for the Sew Yellow for Endo Challenge, but life just got in the way and I didn't get around to getting it sewn up. And then because I was sewing it up as a tutorial, um, it took me a lot longer to sew it up because I wanted to make sure that I could film the different processes. Um, so I am really pleased that I've got that sewn um, and it's a really comfortable make as well. And then I sewed up exactly the same dress in a different fabric, but instead I um, decided to leave off the sleeves. So this is my second version and you might remember this fabric that I shared. I got this from Stitch and Ink. I can't remember when I shared this, maybe it was last weekend. Um, so I decided this would be the perfect um, jersey fabric to turn into or try the Tilly and the Buttons pearl cardigan hack um, without sleeves. So I've obviously got a dress on at the moment, but I'll pop it on and I will share photos of me wearing this. But you basically end up with that drop shoulder, but it's got that cute ruffle. And that's exactly how the Kokowawa Craft plum dress is. Um, you've got this gorgeous ruffle on the end of the drop shoulder detail. Um, so this is exactly the same hack that I've done before, where you've got the bodice um, as exactly the same as the Tilly and the Buttons pearl cardigan. And then I've just got a um, sort of front skirt panel, a back skirt, another front skirt panel, and then that ruffle on the bottom. And then I've just decided to omit the sleeve um, because that ruffle hides that arm open, opening and you end up with that really cute ruffle. And I think this will be perfect for the really warm, hopefully really warm um, summer weather that we'll get, hopefully. And I'm really pleased that I've used this fabric because I had three meters of it and I was umming and ahhing about whether to use it for the pearl hack or whether to use it for the Westcliff. I've got quite a lot of Westcliff dresses in my wardrobe and now I've got three of the pearl hack dresses in my wardrobe too. So that was the next make. I'll just grab the pattern so I can talk you through the details of the pearl cardigan just in case you're not aware of the pattern. This is what the original pattern looks like. So it's a wrap cardigan and there's three different sleeve options. So you can do a balloon sleeve which is what I did for the yellow version, this version. Um, you can do a short sleeve, so I could have opted to do short sleeve, but I did want to have that um, ruffle there and I didn't think the short sleeve would work with the ruffle. I think the ruffle would have just hidden the short sleeve or you can just do a regular sleeve as well. It's got this neckband that goes all the way around and then you've got the waistband. So like I said, what I did was I chopped that waistband in half, the pattern piece, and then sewed it as an outer waistband and an inner waistband. So that you end up with a really beautiful enclosed waistband on the inside. It's a really lovely feature. Um, so that is the cardigan. Um, it comes in sizes UK 6 um, up to a UK 34. So for a UK 6, it's a bust measurement of 30 inches, waist measurement of 24 inches and a hip measurement of 33 inches. And then for a UK 34, it's a 56 inch high bust, 60 inch bust measurement and 53 inch waist measurement. So in terms of fabric recommendations for the pearl cardigan, and this fabric would work also for the dress, um, medium weight drapey knit fabrics with at least 20% stretch, like a um, sweater knit, a jacquard knit, stretch velvet, ponty, interlock and lighter weight French terry. And then I've used a cotton jersey and I've also used a polyester jersey there. And then my leopard print dress that I did, that was like a t-shirt weight jersey fabric as well. So I'm really pleased with both of, both of those dresses. And then the other thing that I've sewn up is not finished yet. Um, but I shared this, I think I shared this last weekend, but it's one of my make nine plans. 
and it's using some rifle paper um rifle paper pattern company is that correct rifle paper company um sort of floral fabrics that i got from the primavera collection that came out a couple of years ago so i've had it for a few years one of the fabrics i think i bought from simi sunshine and the other fabric i got from the crafty mastermind um i was really sad that i didn't get the mint colorway of the fabric and then the crafty mastermind said that they were doing a pre-order of the mint colorway so i managed to get it and i was umming and ahhing about whether to use the two fabrics together to create pajamas or not and i've actually gone with that and the pattern that i've used is the nina lee piccadilly pajamas and this is a pattern i've had in my stash for years and not got around to sewing up so I'm really pleased that I've managed to make a start on sewing those pajamas and I've got two more fabrics that I used as my make nine, although I cheated a little bit and put them together, um, almost finished. So I'll show you what I've managed to get done with it and then I'll share some details of the pattern. So here's the first fabric and this is almost finished. I've sewn up most of the pajama top and I've put a little, I remembered to sew a label in before I finished it and this label just says slowly does it. Um, it's got beautiful um, sort of cropped sleeves i can't remember what they described them as but when i um share the details of the pattern i'll let you know on both sides and then it's got this gorgeous curve on either side and then these beautiful uh pockets that have got a curve in them as well really really pretty details so i've managed to sew up most of that and i've inserted the collar as well on the pajamas i just need to um do buttonholes and sew on buttons and actually the buttons that i've used for this here I'm going to use on this pyjama top because I think they'll work really nicely with that fabric and then I've sewn up most of the bottoms um, I just need to attach the waistband do the buttonholes on the waistband and then thread the ribbon through um, but this is the bottom and this is a teal colorway and I think those two fabrics will work really nicely as pyjamas so I'm really pleased and the pyjamas again have got some really gorgeous details to them they've got this beautiful curve again on the bottom i just think that's absolutely beautiful and um, it's such a pretty detail um for some pajamas so i've almost finished them i need to do buttonholes buttons i need to attach the waistband and do buttonholes on the waistband and then thread the ribbon in and then they're completed which is exciting so the pattern is the nina lee piccadilly pajamas um, and in the instructions they actually suggest that you finish like the curves on the pajama bottoms, the curves on the um, pajama top, they recommend that you finish it with bias binding. But what I wanted to do, and I've had this idea for ages, is I wanted to have a go at using some piping. So I had some mint coloured piping, and I'm really pleased with how that detail has turned out so far on the pajamas. I think it's a really beautiful finish. So they recommend on all of the curves and on the curves on the pocket, the curves on the trousers, that you finish um, those edges with bias binding. But instead, I just stitched some piping in place. So you put the piping right sides to right sides. And I found using my um, invisible zipper foot was the best way to get really accurate um, piping. I don't know if you can see, but it's really neat and really close to the edge of the fabric. So you sew it right sides to right sides using the invisible zipper foot and then you turn it to the inside and then I've top stitched on top. I don't know if that's coming up clear enough or not, um, but it's come out really beautifully. For my first time using piping, I will say on the pockets it wasn't as neat because I didn't use my invisible zipper foot. So it's not quite towards the um, edge. You can see here I've got a little bit more of the piping showing through, but that was my first attempt. And then I thought, actually, I think my invisible zipper foot would give me a much neater finish. And it has. It's given me a really neat finish. So I'm really pleased with that um, sort of change to the pattern. And I'm really pleased that I've had a go at sewing some piping because I think I got this piping when I got this fabric, thinking that I would put the two of them together. So the Nina Lee Piccadilly pyjamas comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 20. So bust measurement of 32 inches for a UK 6, 24 inch waist measurement for a 6 and a 33 and a half inch measurement for um, your hip measurement for a UK 6. And then for a UK 20, it's 46 inch bust measurement, 38 inch waist measurement and 47 and a half inch hip measurement. Um, the Piccadilly pyjamas have a chic sleepwear set with oriental accents, a soft and open mandarin collar and gently curving hems. Version one consists of shorts and a cap sleeve shirt. So I've gone with the cap sleeve shirt. Version two of crop trousers and a shirt with three quarter length sleeves. I wanted to keep the cap sleeve um, length because I knew that three quarter length would just be too hot for me. 
the pajama bottoms have a flat front waistband with an elasticated back so i didn't realize that actually so i will need to insert the elastic i've got some in my stash i've always got elastic finishing with a ribbon tie the hems are finished with exposed bias binding so i've decided to um use the um what's it called piping i've decided to use piping instead of the exposed bias binding um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend soft to lightweight fabrics that will feel good against your skin, like a cotton lawn, a rayon and a silk satin. So I've just got to do those last little bits and then I'll have some pyjamas um, for my spring wardrobe. I'm really pleased and really excited because I think they're going to go so beautifully together. And they make a really beautiful pyjama set. So I'm really pleased that I've managed to get on with those this week. So that was all of the sewing that I've got done this week. Like I said, I have been a little bit poorly, so I've not been able to sew as much as I wanted to because I was hoping to make a start on my tiger print bomber jacket. And then I've also got the Sew Over It Dorothy jacket in a mint um, coating, which is fleece lined, although it's really warm at the moment. So they're not necessarily the most um, weather appropriate garments to be sewing up. But I know it's spring, so our weather's quite interchangeable. So they will be pushed on to maybe, probably not next week because it's work, but maybe the following week I might, might get some time at the weekend to sew those up. So on to some fabrics that I wanted to share with you and they're from the shop that I can't pronounce. I'll put a thing in now that shows you what the shop is actually called because um, I'm not very good at pronouncing their name. But I went onto their website again, they've got so many gorgeous fabrics and I saw lots of beautiful, mostly, I think they're all cottons actually, oh and I've got a sweatshirting fabric which I'll share with you, I've just left it over there, I'll grab it in a second. So, a couple of them for me and then a couple of them to make some garments for my family. So I'll start with the one that's on top and this is described as Habitat Stripes um, Quilting Cotton and I've got two metres of this. It was actually my youngest daughter that spotted this. She loved all the colours in the pastel stripes. And because it's a cotton poplin, it's quite a lightweight fabric, but there's not a huge amount of drape. And she would like me to turn it into some kind of summer dress for her. So I'm thinking some kind of fairly fitted bodice with a gathered skirt for the summer. Um, yeah, it hasn't got a huge amount of drape to it. But yeah, this one is going to be turned into a dress for Lola. I'm not quite sure when I'll get around to sewing that up. I need to decide on a pattern for her first. Um, but I'm looking forward to sewing that up and I've got two meters of that but because it's a quilting poplin um, it's it is quite a narrow uh, fabric but I should be able to get a dress with a gathered skirt out of that for Lola and then the next one is for me and I spotted this one because I know that the fruity fruit salad sewing I can't remember what the hashtag was that, um, that was a challenge I've talked about already um, that was on Instagram last year is coming back and I saw this chambray with the gorgeous little strawberries and I thought that would be perfect for a cute little skirt for myself. The skirt pattern I'm going to definitely use is the free pattern by the Little Pomegranate, the Sabina skirt. I really love that skirt and I could see this being a really lovely lightweight summer skirt. So it's a chambray fabric and it's got strawberries all over it and I only got a metre and a half of this but it is quite wide so I'm hoping that I'll have enough fabric to turn it into the Sabina skirt. I might have to omit the pockets and just cut the back pattern piece um, twice and then have the ruffle um, but we'll see I might be able to squeeze it out of um, a metre and a half because it's quite wide um, but I just really loved that and I thought it was a really cute print on a blue background with these printed strawberries all over it. So that's going to become a skirt. And then the next fabric I'd got for myself, but when it arrived, my husband quite liked the look of it. And I do like to sew him up a summer shirt. Um, so a shirt that he can wear when we go on our holidays. And we are going away in the summer for a couple of weeks. So he has claimed this for fabric for himself. And I'm going to use it to sew up a shirt for him. I haven't decided on the pattern yet. But I have got, I think it's a McCall's pattern that I sewed up last summer for him that he really likes. It's quite a relaxed fit. I've got two metres of this fabric. And this was um, Sweet Lollipop Cotton Poplin. So this is going to become a shirt for my husband for the summer. So I've got a bit of time to decide on what pattern to use. It's really lightweight and I think it will be perfect to take on holiday. If I've got any left, I might turn it into um, maybe a matching shirt for myself or a little top for myself as well because um, I really love that bright yellow with those really cute lollipops all over it. 
And then the next one is a really gorgeous, bright, vibrant floral poplin. Um, so this was called, yeah, just floral pop poplin. And I got two meters of this one. And this is going to become a deer and doe myosotis dress. Um, I've got all of these plans. I now just need lots and lots of time to turn these fabrics into these things. Um, but yes, this is a really lovely lightweight cotton poplin. And I love how vibrant it is. It's exactly my sort of fabric i just love how bright it is it's on a um i can't really tell i think it's a white background but to be honest it's so bright and colorful there's bits of black in the background as well i just love those colors i think they're absolutely glorious so this is going to become a deer and doe myosotis with all the ruffles because i just love that pattern um, and i think that'll be perfect for the summertime as well and then the final fabric I'll just grab. And then the final fabric I wanted to share that I bought with all of the poplins is this sweatshirting fabric. Um, so it's described as a soft fern sweatshirting. And I've got two meters of this. And this is going to become some baby clothes because I've got a couple of friends. One's just had a little girl and I've got a friend who's just gone on maternity leave who's expecting a little boy. And I think this is a really lovely um, sort of gender neutral sweatshirting fabric. So I'm going to use it to sew up probably exactly the same set for both of them. Just a little strawberry um, sweatshirt, poppy and jazz strawberry sweatshirt and then tangerine trousers. And if I've got any left, I'd really like to make a pansy dress, which is also a poppy and jazz pattern. Um, I really love that colour um, and it's really lovely on soft on the other side. Um, so I think that will make really gorgeous um, baby clothes. So I'm really excited about sewing those up. Um, so lots of plans as usual. And then on to a pattern that I wanted to talk about today. I've ordered it and I've sent it off to be copy shop printed by Fabuloso. And I've also um, sent off the booklet to get printed as well because they print the pattern booklets. And I really love that about their printing service. So hopefully that will arrive next week. But it's the new pattern by Friday Pattern Company. And the pattern is called the Segura, Segura set. I think I'm saying it correctly. I'll put an image in of what it looks like now, but it's absolutely beautiful. All of the tester versions that have been shared on Instagram are so inspiring and just look great. There's been a range of fabrics um, used to make the set as well. Um, so do go and check out the hashtag for the Sagara set, which is the Friday Pattern Company pattern that's just come out. Absolutely beautiful. And then Paige Joanna sh shared a reel of her um, make. She's made this gorgeous mustard yellow um, sort of set, which is beautiful. So do go and check out the hashtag for some inspiration. I've already been looking through my fabrics to see which fabrics I would like to sell up as my first set. But it is basically, it's a two piece set designed for woven fabrics. Um, made up of an elastic waistband sort of pants and then a pullover top with really roomy pockets in the trousers, a waistband with a drawstring and then the top has got this plunging V neckline which I wasn't sure about at first because I don't really go for like plunging necklines but all of the um, versions that I've seen so far are just absolutely beautiful and then the other great thing about the top is you can wear it reversed so you can have the V on the back if you're not too sure about having the V at the front. Um, it's got an optional um, sort of tie closure um, and then like I said you can wear the top backwards as well. In terms of recommended fabrics, light to medium weight woven fabrics, so linen, rayon, tensile, silk and cotton. I'm quite excited about the cotton because I've got loads of cotton in my um, fabric stash um, that might work for this set and I just think it's going to be a really cute set to wear in the spring summer. It looks super comfortable and everybody that has sewn it up just looks amazing in the set as well. It comes in sizes extra small to 7X. So for an extra small, it's a bust measurement of 32 to 33 inches, a waist measurement of 24 to 25 inches and a hip measurement of 34 to 35 inches. And then a 7X is a 59 to 60 inch bust measurement, 52 to 53 inch waist measurement and 62 to 63 inch hip measurement and I just absolutely love this pattern. I'm really really excited about my copy shop printing arriving in the post hopefully early next week. Um, so do go and check it out if you haven't already and I'll link it down below so you can go and check it out but I'm sure like me lots of you bought it instantly and they did have 20% off um, because it was a new pattern released. I'm not sure. I'll see when the 20% off um, ends and I'll put some information in about it now. 
So then I just wanted to update you on the sewing challenge that I shared, I think I shared it last week by Sew so Joey, and it was the Sew so T-shirt for Summer 2022 challenge, which was run last year and it was really great to be part of, and it's coming back this year. And there wasn't a date for when it was coming back, but um, we've had an update and it's coming back on Wednesday the 1st of June. Um, so Joey has shared all of the prizes, there's loads of prizes, so, so do go and check her out over on Instagram where she's shared lots more information. And she's put on the latest um, sort of update that it's going to be, um, the challenge is coming back but with a few twists, so I'm looking forward to seeing what those twists are. And then I wanted to share a YouTube channel, I think I've shared her channel before on my um, Sunday Sewing Catch Up, but it's the lovely Crystal who is my social thread. And the reason I'm sharing her again is because she's doing a series at the moment, which I've really enjoyed watching, where she interviews um, people from the sewing community. So she's interviewed already um, Rainbow Fabrics. Um, she's interviewed, I've written down who she's interviewed because I don't want to forget. She's interviewed um, Jen Leg Tease Creatives. And then she's also interviewed Ella from Happy Fabric. And then I was interviewed. I was so blown away that um, Crystal got in touch with me to ask if she could interview me, but she interviewed me at the beginning of the week and it was a really fun interview to be part of. Lots of sewing related questions, talking about my sewing journey and just lots and lots of things to do with sewing. So that will be coming out over on Crystal's channel very soon. Um, but she's a prolific YouTuber. There's loads of videos over on her channel. Um, she uploads lots and lots of videos across the week. Um, and I really enjoy watching her channel too. So if you haven't followed her yet, do go give her a little follow and there will be an interview over on her channel with myself um, very soon. And then I always like to finish my videos by um, letting you know what my sewing plans are. And I've got lots of things in my hand for sewing plans, not necessarily to sew them up because I know next week, realistically, I will not get a chance to do any sewing. The first week back of a new term is always quite hectic. Um, so I know that I definitely won't get a chance to do any sewing next week. And then at the weekend, we've got a market, so I might not get any time uh, to do any sewing because I normally like to do a little bit of sewing like on a Friday evening, but I'll be spending my evening baking. And then Saturday, it's an all-day market, so it's 11 till 6, so I won't get a chance to do any sewing. And to be honest, I'll probably be absolutely wiped out um, by Saturday evening, so I don't think I will get any sewing done. I might be able to get some baby clothes sewn up because they're quite quick to make and I'm quite keen to send my um, gifts off in the post. So I might have some baby clothes to share with you and I might get a chance to finish my um, Piccadilly pyjamas. So I might be able to update you on those next Sunday. But what I'm going to do for the week when I go back to work, so next week, um, I'm going to set myself um, some sewing tasks my least favourite sewing task, which is cutting projects out. So tracing the patterns and then cutting them out. So I think that's what I'm going to do across the week. So I still get to do a little bit of sewing because it is really good for my mental health and well-being and encouraging me to switch off from work. So I'm going to set myself the task of cutting out some projects that I want to have ready to sew um, over the next couple of months. So the first one is the Megan Nielsen Hevea jacket using the quilted cotton fabric that I got from Fabric Revival. Absolutely beautiful. I think they've still got this in the yellow colourway. And then I talked about turning this So Heli Jane fabric, cotton poplin fabric into the I Am Irma. So I've got the pattern here. It's I Am Patterns Irma shirt and I'm hoping to turn it into the shirt dress. So I need to trace that pattern, I need to trace the Megan Nielsen pattern and then cut those out. And then I also want to trace the Burnside bibs, so the So Has Seven Burnside bibs and cut out um, using this gorgeous viscose linen that came in a Sir Hayley Jane box. So those are my sewing plans for the week. Um, and then hopefully I'll be able to get some baby clothes cut out and sewn up as well. So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been getting up to this week. Um, let me know what project you're working on and also please do let me know in the comments below what you want to see on my channel because I want to make sure that I'm bringing out content that you enjoy watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button um, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.